You now have Python inside Excel, which is amazing. You can create all these amazing visualizations that we'll go through. Um, my name is David. I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Power BI. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff, and Python in Excel is just fantastic. Although I will say to start off that it's only available for the beta channel for now. So to check if you have it, go to File and then Account, and then here you'll see uh, Beta Channel. Click Update Options and Update Now if you don't have it. Um, and if you have the personal version of Office 365, then you can sign up for the beta channel. The link for how to do that in the description below. And I'll also put a link to this file so you can download it and play around with this file with the sample data set and everything else. So let's get started. So here we have some data with country name, life expectancy, birth age, median age, uh, something about the forested area, percent urbanized, and employment and agriculture. And then we have size, whether it's large or small, and continent as well. So uh, the orange ones are categorical things, and the numerical ones are in blue. So we're going to analyze this data, and it's done by pretty much every other country in the world. So let's get started. In charts, here I'm going to start by going to the Formulas tab and choosing Insert Python. So here it automatically puts a green thing up here and also in the cell you're editing. And I start writing my Python script. So I'm going to write df equals, and then I'm going to select all of my data like this and press ent control enter. So you don't press enter as it says here, use control enter to commit Python code. And that is going to show me this data frame. Uh, now a data frame is essentially a condensed table into one cell. And as you can see, it does the first five rows, then jumps to the last five as well. Uh, but our headers aren't right. For example, here we have headers, column one, column two, column three, column four. What I want is my header country name up here, life expectancy up here, etc. So we're going to add something else, which is comma, and we're going to do headers equals true control enter. And now if I go over here, I can see now my headers are in the right place. Yay. Okay. Now I can get started. Uh, now, if you go to the formulas tab, in the drop down for insert Python, you have try Python samples. And here I get all of these ones. And the first one we're going to create is this one, a pair plot. So I'm going to insert a sample and then we're going to replicate it with our data. So it creates a new worksheet with this. And this is the output. So what this is doing is it's putting the relationship in a scatter plot between two things and doing all the combinations. So, uh, in the diagonals, it's doing this histogram because it's doing one versus the same one. So it's just a bar chart of how many things there are in each category, in each band. But then here it's doing a scatter plot of all of them and it helps you kind of visualize the data. So let's look at the code. So we have three lines. So the first one says import Seaborn as SNS. We actually don't need that because I can delete it, press control enter, and we'll see that it still works. If you go to formula and initialization, then it shows you here the import statements are preloaded. So within that is Seaborn as SNS and Pandas as well. Those are the two big ones. Seaborn is this beautiful data visualization thing that we're going to be seeing for all these examples. But you can import your own custom libraries if you want to. So that's the first one. The second one is the equivalent of what we already did, which is get the Excel table and then headers equals true. Uh, and then in the second one, we're doing our actual calculation. So all I need is this part where I can just copy this and I can go back in here and I can go to my shortcut, control alt shift P will also open the Python code in there. It's probably the one I use the most. I'm going to paste it. And then I can say, instead of sample DF, R1 is just called DF. That's the one we named it. And our variables are median age, life expect dot urban percent and the last one we'll do is birth rate. so i'm going to press control enter to lock that in and it's given me this python error and then here it says the diagnostics window pane popped up this is really really useful it tells me there's an error in the key so if i go back to my name i can see why it's not got a T in life expect dot. So I'm going to go back here and delete it. Control end. 
There we go. And now it's got my image. And if I click in here, I can choose to change it from a Python object to an Excel value. And now it's popped up like this. Now we can see the relationship between our variables. So for example, I have my histograms in here. Uh, this one follows maybe closest to a normal distribution, maybe this one, but not too close either. Usually if something is in a diagonal line, that means it's correlated. And we can see that there is correlation here. This is median age and life expectancy. That's what we'd expect, right? If the life expectancy is higher, then the median age is probably also higher. But it's not so close together. So um, it means that there is correlation, but not like really, really huge correlation. Uh, whereas we have ones that are going the other way, like this one. And this is birth rates with median age. And this one is a lot closer to a line. So it means the correlation will probably be a lot higher, but it's negatively correlated. Where there's a higher birth rate, there's a lower median age. And there's some other things in this. Uh, this one, for example, has no correlation, median age and urbanization percent. This is very, very low, as you might expect. So um, this is one way to do a pair plot, but we'll look at the correlation in a further function. It's always good practice to click the bin icon there to get it to pop up with the new stuff because we're actually going to go a little bit further. I'm going to take this and copy it. And then another way to enter Python code is equals PY. And then that will again give you the green, paste that. We actually don't need to give it a name this time. We can just put sns.pairplot. And we're going to add one more thing, which is a comma, something called hue. Press tab to lock that in. Thank you, autocomplete equals size. So size of countries greater than 5 million or less than 5 million population. So now we're going to do the same and click Excel value. It does take a while sometimes, but there we go. So now it's actually put things in categories with orange being small countries and blue being large countries. And in the diagonals, instead of having a histogram, it's got more of this kind of area chart where it shows you the distribution of both variables, which is pretty cool. All right, so uh, let me close out of these three and let's do some other ones. So for a swarm plot, we're going to type in the code ourselves. So we're going to say uh, sns.catplot and then we're going to open our brackets and we're going to say df because that's our data and then we're going to say kind equals swarm and we're going to say x equals continent and y equals always in speech marks when you refer to column names control enter oh that seems to have worked there we go. So this is a swarm plot where it shows you all of the bits of data by continent because that's why I asked it to split by. And it shows, it goes kind of across when there's lots that are in that same region for like expectancy. We can go a little bit further again. We can do a hue as well. So I'm going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to say here, hue equals size. I've chosen size because it's binary. There's two. Uh, oh, this sometimes happens to me. That's a normal Excel. I'm going to copy that. Control Shift Alt P, paste that, Control Enter. And need to do this. I think I do need to click this manually one by one. I don't think there's a better way. And there it is kind of showing them, but they're a bit overlapped. If you want to make that a little bit cleaner, we can use something called Dodge. Doesn't always auto complete. And um, by the way, true has no speech marks. There we go. So now let's put them side by side and you can see it a little bit cleaner. So yep, yeah, these are some plots that you don't get in the regular Excel. Let's go to a joint plot. So here I'm going to again go to Python equals SNS dot joint plot and then open my brackets DF comma and then X equals in speech marks life expect and then y equals birth rate. Two words, needs to be exact. Control enter. Image, let's expand that. There we go. So this is what a joint plot is. 
it's kind of like a combination of a scatter chart and a histogram. Like this combination in a different way. But I think this is quite clean actually for two different variables. As we can see here, it's a negative correlation as we saw in this plot. By the way, note that these are mirror images of each other. So this one is the same as this one. Um, this one and this one are the same, etc. So we can go a little bit further with this joint plot. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to here paste it. And I'm going to say kind equals re regression. Ah, again, I didn't do that. Control C, Control Shift P, Control Enter. Change this to an Excel value. There we go. And now it's got a regression line and this kind of line around the data like this. Great. So this is another kind of useful plot for using two numerical data sets. Uh, KDE chart. So I'm going to do SNS dot KDE plot, open my brackets. I'm going to say BF again, and then X equals, let's do the same stuff. So birth rate and Y equals life expect. Control enter, image, change to Excel value. And this is what it is. It's showing me that there are two kind of central points here and here. And it's showing the kind of circles and ovals to show you where the data is distributed. And after that, let's uh, do another option. So let's add some formatting to it. So let's say fill equals true. By the way, I learned all of these in the last 24 hours. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to uh, control shift P and paste control N. Um, now we're going to combine this one with this one. So I'm going to take this code, copy. Here I'm going to control shift P, paste, and in kind, I'm going to say KDE. And I'm also going to say uh, fill equals true. Control enter. And now it's going to give me this in the middle and this stuff around it. So just the, the line that we see over here, which is similar to this line for the KDE plot. And let's do another one, this time with hex. So if I copy this one and draw shift P there, I need to do type equals, kind equals hex and control enter. There we go. So it didn't work. Because uh, fill has no property you can use there. But if I change it, then I can get this. This is a hexagon plot. And just to show you, this can be really useless sometimes as well. <laughs> Could have told me that just fill is not a problem there. So this is another way to show where the most dense places of the data are, essentially. Um, violin chart. Violin charts are cool. They're kind of like um, something that is somewhere between this and a box plot all in one. So I'll shift P, SNS dot violin plot. And then I'm going to open my brackets. I'm going to say DF. And I'm going to say from DF, give me X equals, equals continent. Facing is important here. And Y equals birth rate. And this is a violin plot. There you go. So it kind of shows you um, in the middle, there's the box plot with the highest points, the upper and lower quartiles showing you there with a dot for the median. And then it's showing you the distribution as well. So where there is a lot and where there's little, Europe you'll see is very short and narrow because the birth rate doesn't vary that much compared to Africa, which varies a lot. So we're going to go one step further. So I'm going to copy this code and here I'm going to Control shift P and paste, and I'm going to add in our favorite friend, Mr. Hugh equals size and control shift, control enter. And then let's see what it gives. It gives like this, but essentially they're pretty much identical on both sides. So that's not that interesting to make it more space efficient. We can do 
as splits equals true. And then you can, it is different on both sides and it takes up less clutter essentially. So I quite like this because it really shows where all of your points of data are, including the mean, the median, the upper, lower quartiles, etc. It's a really cool chart that I wish existed in Excel, but now you can do them in Excel with this feature. Great. So let's look at correlations and I'll take us to our next chart. So let's go down and scroll down and do some stuff with correlation. So here I'm going to write Python mode df dot car open close brackets, and that's going to return this data frame. And it's got here all of my numerical measures against each other in this plot. Now, like we did with the images, I can click on that and I can choose an Excel value and it will expand it into multiple rows and columns. This is using an array. Uh, if you did have some text in there, it would give you a spill error. So there's a spill error that's telling you it is trying to go to this dotted line, but it can't because of this. So if you delete it, it goes away. Um, note that, and this is recommended when you are using Python, it doesn't recalculate. In fact, uh, my calculations are only doing it once. If you go to formulas and calculation options, you have partial. Partial will mean that Python and data tables will not recalculate, but everything else will. I highly recommend using partial. It gets really annoying if you have automatic and you're using Python because it's, it's too slow otherwise. Uh, okay, so it's a, a fairly new feature also only for insiders. So control enter will recalculate it. Uh, it's doing this when it's still kind of checking it, but that will go away soon. But what about if we only wanted a subset of these columns? So what you can do is you can do Python mode and you can do DF and then do square brackets twice and choose your columns. It's easy to forget um, how to do your speech marks and commas and stuff. But if you do that and then dot core, same as before, there's a data frame as well. And if I look at it, it's only got those four columns. Perfect. So um, we've got it like this and I could expand it out, but you know what? We're going to make this into a chart. So I'm going to do uh, before that sns.heatmap, open my brackets, close my brackets there, enter. And now let's expand this into an Excel value. By the way, if you want to keep it small in a cell, you can right click and choose create reference and then it will do this, which is in the formula tab, you can see it's linked to that cell. So this can be any floating object that's linked to the value in a cell. There we go. So as we can see, the blackest ones are highly negatively correlated. Um, the one that's one on the nose, this one is the same value, so that doesn't really add anything, but the ones that are highly correlated are kind of towards that color and towards the darker colors as well. Uh, we could do a lot uh, more. So I could say, for example, anot equals true. By the way, I just learned these recently. And here you could have like the numbers of how close they are. If you wanted to do the correlation rounded to one decimal place, you could do dot round and then one like that. And we'll do it to one decimal place. So actually, these are pretty highly negatively correlated and Life expectancy and median age is highly positively correlated. All right, so back to here. Uh, we've done a bunch of different plots <laughs> that are only available using Python. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, then consider giving the like button. You can find this file and download it and play around with it in your own time. But remember, this is only available to Office Insiders, so you need to have the beta channel of Excel with Office 365 at the time of making this video to make it work. Thanks for watching.